Hello friends, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink, back with not only a flat shaker card, but also some no line coloring. So I pulled out the Colorado Craft Company Slimline Ice Cream Set. <laughs> I've bought a bunch of their big and bold sets. I love them. It's been sitting here for months. And apparently the other day was like National Ice Cream Day. And I'm late with that, but that I it spurred me on to create this card. So I have some Nina Classic Crest Solar White 80 pound cardstock, and I put it in my Misty. And then I'm inking up this big ice cream cone, and it, it gets big, um, with Honeybee's No Line ink. Um, this came out a few months ago, and I hadn't had a chance to use it yet. So I stamped the image a couple times so I could really see it. And then I'm going to color this in with Cove of Markers. And this first little part here, this is real time because I do still get comments about that from people. They're like, oh, I wish I could color as fast as you. I do too. <laughs> what you see in videos is not real. It's just sped up in editing. This is real. This is about the, you know, normal speed. I just speed it up in editing because otherwise my videos would be ridiculously long and, um, fry up my computer trying to process it all. So an image like this honestly is so much easier to color. Like I, I know I don't do a lot of no line. I've mentioned this before. Most of the time it's because I don't have the patience. Um, yeah. And some images are just a lot more difficult and I get way too frustrated. However, images like this one, it's bigger. So I'm not dealing with little, you know, little teeny little areas that you're trying to get detail in and all that stuff. And also because the stamp lines are so bold as well and that helps like that's what I was doing was just kind of following the stamp lines and even then though as I add more Copic marker it starts to kind of obscure the stamp lines because I was using no line ink obviously but it's a waffle cone so I was like eh, I'm just gonna add little dots and lines wherever as long as you can see texture like it's a waffle cone <laughs> so this is actually a lot of fun I enjoyed the process of coloring this it wasn't super difficult um I do get asked a lot too, like how long did this take, et cetera, et cetera, when it comes to coloring. I don't generally ever time myself because the whole point is, you know, therapeutic and all that. I do know with this one, it was around 20, 25 minutes, something. Not very long, honestly. So all I did was like, I started with my lightest and worked my way to my darkest, which again, for me, if you watch videos where I've done Copic coloring for years now, I go darkest to lightest because again, laziness <laughs> and speed. But with something like this, it was easier to go lightest to darkest and just kind of build up from there. Also, if you're hearing like snuffles and snorts in the background, my, my dog, he's uh, on his bed behind me and I can't kick him out when I do voiceovers because otherwise he would have a complete meltdown because, you know, he would be abandoned forever. Anyway, Bo says hi. <laughs> so I just went along, worked my way to darkest and then I worked my way back to add, you know, more, a little bit more shading and depth and just dotting. Kind of, you know, dottings and squigglings and things like that. Because a waffle cone, it's got texture to it. And that's what I was going for. So this this was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed doing this. I, I really enjoyed like these colors and like creating this texture. And I had the stamp you can see like right beside me too to kind of follow. Because as the lines get more and more obscured, it's harder to see. And then for the ice cream, I went with, well, strawberry, basically. I just wanted something pink. Cause I'm going to add like the, um, like hot fudge topping, or at least in my head, I was like, it needs to be hot fudge. So I was like, what would look best with this? Um, so I went with pink cause there's something about pink and brown together too, that I just really love. Although when I've mentioned this before, my favorite ice cream is tiger tiger, which if you've never had it, you're just missing out. It's amazing. I hate licorice, but I love tiger tiger ice cream. It's orange ice cream with black licorice stripes. Go figure. I literally hate licorice, like hate it. I won't eat licorice. Blech. But I love Tiger Tiger ice cream. If a, you know, a good ice cream place has that on the menu, that's what I'm getting. So anywho, <laughs> I did the same thing with the ice cream. Just went with pinks, lightest to darkest. This actually, I had more trouble with the ice cream than I did with the cone. It was one of those times where I was like, oh, this is looking like crap. But when you're doing any sort of coloring, whether it's no line, watercolor, you're, you're blending backgrounds, whatever it is you're creating. If you're finding yourself getting frustrated or you think it looks like absolute crap, 
but you're not done or you are done and you're just not happy with it, walk away. Set it aside, go do something else, go watch a TV show, you know, whatever. Go away from it, come back to it later. It's amazing how often after you just haven't been looking at it and you come back to it with fresh eyes, huge difference. So I powered through, I was happy with it. I made sure everything was dry. Copics do dry quite quickly, but I still actually blasted it with my heat tool to make sure the ink was dry. And then I poured embossing powder over it to make sure it wasn't gonna cling to anything. And then I put the image back into my Misty and I'm gonna stamp this like, yeah, I just think of it as hot fudge. This little solid stamp in this little stamp set. So I lined it up, used my anti-static powder tool again, and then I'm inking up that stamp with um, ground espresso distress oxide ink. And I'm gonna stamp this multiple times to get one, a really good solid image, but also to like, make sure this ink is like really saturated because I'm going to heat emboss it. So once I got it stamped on there, I'm gonna coat this with uh, clear embossing powder. So that's gonna give it that gloss that I wanted. And then while it was still pretty hot because I'm just like working right here, the minute it's melted, I'm gonna pour more embossing powder over it. And I'm just gonna kind of build up the layers this way. Depending on what you're doing when you want to build up layers with embossing powder, sometimes you need to keep re-stamping the image. I did think about that. I would have kept re-stamping the image, the like hot fudge image, not with the ground espresso. Like I had those layers, that color there. I would have kept re-stamping it with clear, like clear embossing ink. But I found that this just worked. Although as I'm like building up the layers here and the paper itself is starting to get hot, the embossing powder started to cling. So in the end, I only did about three layers. That was more than enough. It just gave that nice, smooth, glossy look, which love it. Just love it. So I have my ice cream image. Now I need to do a background. And I took some of Simon's 120 pound smooth white cardstock. I've mentioned this a lot. I love their cardstock for blending on. The, like just the texture, like well, the lack of texture, it is smooth and inks just blend on it like a dream. It's my favorite cardstock for blending. So I have that piece of cardstock and I have Simon's Wave stencil. I don't know, it just popped in my head and I was like, this would work, create a nice little pattern. I don't want it to be too busy. So I've got the stencil over it. I'm working on just on my little tonic uh, magnetic platform here. And I used some of my honeycomb tape just to hold the cardstock in place. And I'm using the magnets to hold the stencil in place. And then I'm blending similar colors to the ice cream cone. So I started with tea dye Distress Oxide ink. And then I'm going to use Vintage Photo and then the Ground Espresso. So to kind of mimic the cone. And then once those are blended on, for the pinks, I'm actually going to use Kitsch Flamingo, Worn Lipstick, and Festive Berries. So not colors I normally, or combos I normally reach for. I actually posted this background, just the background on my Instagram account. And a lot of people were saying the same thing. It was like, these aren't colors I would normally reach for, etc. And I'm like... Yeah, that's exactly it. Like, it's funny sometimes how things kind of influence other things. Like something as simple as the ice cream cone I colored. I was like, you know, maybe do a color combo that I don't normally do. Even though, like I said, I do like pinks and browns together. It just brings me back to like, was that like the early 2000s? Like all our clothing was like pink and brown. Anyway, <laughs> once I was done my blending, I very lightly trimmed this down. This was three and a half by eight and a half inches. And I just, I took the littlest bit off of the sides and top, like just slivers, as you can see here with my paper trimmer, because I'm going to wrap this and I wanted it to stay about the same size as my slimline card base. And this time for my flat shaker card, I'm using vellum. I've done several flat shaker card videos. I'll be doing more in the future, but all of those have either used like shaker pouches or um, clear acetate packaging, that sort of thing. I had never done a vellum one yet. And the other day, Sherry Carroll did one for Simon Says Stamp. And I was like, oh, love. And I know uh, Christina Warner has done some vellum ones. Like a, a bunch of people have done amazing like vellum shakers. So it was kind of just sitting in my head. But I also wanted to do vellum for this one because I wanted to soften that background. I don't want it to be as obvious because I want the ice cream cone to be, you know. So all I did was flip the background over the vellum fold the vellum over and I'm adhering it into place with score tape. And I'm only gonna do three sides first. You don't need to score the vellum unless you have a really heavy, like heavyweight vellum that's very stiff, you might need to score it, but this didn't need to score. Just folded it over, pressed it into the score tape adhesive, 
And then before I seal the final side, I'm going to fill this. This time I'm going to use some sequin and confetti mixes, which I also hadn't done. I've just been using like chunky glitter and stuff in my shakers. So this first bit was some strawberry shortcake mix from Simon's Stamp. And then I had some espresso sequins in my stash that were just meant to be. So I dumped some of those in there. And then I still added glitter. <laughs> I've got a little container of Studio Cadia Majestic Chunky Glitter that I've used, I think, in almost all my like flat shaker cards. And I get, like I've said, you guys, like this, it still lasts. It just lasts forever. All this stuff. Like I have lifetimes, multiple lifetimes supply of glitter and, and sequins and all the things. And uh, that's not going to stop me from buying more. So anyway, once I was happy with how much I had in there, I kind of shook it to, to flatten it out as much as I could before I adhere that final side. So then peel off that backing, press that down. And then I'm going to use my scissors to trim off those little um, corners, I guess you'll call them, that are folded over there on each of the four corners because they stick out past the sides. So I just kind of lift them up a little bit with my finger and then snip it off with my scissors so they're not sticking out. It just kind of flattens everything. It'll make it easier to adhere to my card base. So I just snip those off and then I've got my fun flat shaker card with that vellum. So it just, like I said, softens that background a bit. So after I've done that off camera, I heat embossed a couple sentiments from the stamp set. And I'd also trimmed out the ice cream cone. There is a coordinating wafer die for this set. I will link to it. I don't have it. I didn't um, order it with this because I don't think it was available at the time or like it was sold out, whatever. So I just fussy cut it even like the ice cream cone's easy to fussy cut. I don't like fussy cutting sentiments, but I did anyway. <laughs> so I heat embossed the couple of the sentiments from the set and then I adhered the ice cream cone and the sentiments just with craft tacky glue. That's the one of the nice things about using vellum as your shaker. You can use just regular glue to adhere to it. Um, in my other videos where I did the, you know, acetate shaker pouches, etc., you have to be a little more creative with your adhesive options because you're adhering to plastic. So anywho, um, you can check those videos out. I'll have links to them at the end of this one. Um, so for my card base, it's more of Simon's 120 pound white cardstock. I folded my card base inside out and then I put it into my Misty and I've got the ice cream cone again and I'm inking up the ice cream cone with the tea dye oxide ink and the worn lipstick oxide ink and just holding the ink pad on an angle. I'm not too, too concerned about getting a perfect blend between those two colors or not even a blend, you know, keeping the ice cream and the cone, the exact colors. Yeah. It's the inside of the card, not too concerned. So it inked up. I really like how this looks just stamped in color too. <laughs> if you really want to do like clean and simple cards with an image like this, totally could work. So I stamped that and then I took another sentiment from the set and this one I inked up with the ground espresso oxide color. And then once that was stamped off camera, I did blast this a little bit with my heat tool. Oxide inks do take longer to dry. People have been asking me about that. I do either, it's either sitting for a little bit or I just quickly hit it with my heat tool to make sure it's dry. Sometimes I smear it on the other side of the inside of the card, but I just go with it. So I did that and then I'm going to adhere my shaker panel to my card base. And then I pulled out my Jelly Roll 10, so the widest Jelly Roll white pen and added some highlights. I even added a little bit of the highlight like the jelly roll pen to the embossed like hot fudge that yeah, it was a little harder to do because the heat embossing, like the glossy nature of it kind of resists the pen. But, and I wasn't sure if it would dry on that, like if it would smear later, but I have it sitting here and it did dry. So added little, again, little like dots and lines and things, not following any sort of light source just for that like texture. That's what I was going for. So went along and just added that to the ice cream, to the cone, to the hot fudge, and that finished off my card. So I've got this fun, super flat shaker card. <laughs> That's so much fun. I love it. And I, and I just, I'm obsessed with these flat shakers. It, it's just fun. 
I love that I don't have to sit and fiddle, although sometimes I'm sure I will, you know, with building dimension, depending on the type of thing I'm creating. But this is a fun way to do a shaker card without adding all that bulk. So I paired this with a grocery bag slimline envelope, and that was it. So I will have links to everything I used in the description box below the video, as well as picture links on my blog, and that'll be linked below. Thank you all so much for watching and subscribing, thumbs up and commenting, all of it. I very much appreciate your support, and I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye!